Today we are making some high-end fall decor that you're going to want to use all season long. Hi there, I'm Allie and welcome to my channel. Today I am making some fall decor based on current home trends and colors that I'm seeing for the season and I'm very excited about these DIYs and I know you're going to love them too. So let's hop in to the first project. I'm gonna start with a really simple wreath and I'm using a 12 inch embroidery hoop to start and also this wheat that I got from Hobby Lobby on sale for 40% off in their fall section. So I found the easiest way to build out this wreath is by taking some small bits of the wheat, just a couple pieces, and then using some wire to wrap it around to make a little bunch and then hot gluing that entire bunch onto the wreath. And now we're gonna be working from the outside to the center bottom of this wreath. So what I did was start a little bit smaller with a few less wheat pieces with the outside. And then as I began working my way in with the other bunches, I began adding more and more wheat to the bunches in order to start really filling out the wreath and making this look a little bit fuller. Once I got toward the bottom, I did start going in with some of the excess pieces that I had left and started gluing them in a little bit individually to fill in some of those gaps and spots where I definitely felt like it needed a little bit more fullness and I just simply hot glued down each individual piece to fill out the wreath and use up the remaining pieces that I had left over. Now to make this look really nice and finished, I'm using some jute twine from Dollar Tree. I'm gluing it down on the back and then wrapping it around the entire center of the wreath to cover up those stems and the little bit of the wire that you can see. And now you absolutely could stop right here because I do love the simplicity of this look, but I decided to use this gorgeous burnt orange ribbon that I found at Dollar Tree to just make a very casual, loose kind of bow. And that completes this very simple yet very elevated looking wreath. Next up, let's make a fall bead garland. This is just great accent decor. So I started by sticking some bamboo skewers into a scrap piece of styrofoam and then evenly distributing my wood beads on all of the stakes. That's because this is gonna make it a little bit easier to stain it. So I'm using this traditional cherry wood stain by Verithane. I just love this color for fall. I recently used it for a DIY fall lantern and I fell in love with this color. So I painted all of the beads with this wood stain and this has just such a deep dark color but I didn't want the beads to be that dark. So as soon as I got the stain on, I wiped them off immediately with a paper towel to lighten up that color and really just bring out that beautiful wood grain that these beads do have. Once all the beads were covered with the wood stain, I set them aside to dry for a few hours. Next up, I put five of the stained beads into a plastic baggie along with a couple unstained beads. These are just here for some extra filler in the bag and a little bit of some white paint. And now this is kind of hard because I didn't set up my camera properly to show you, but all I did was shake around the beads just a little tiny bit until they very lightly were coated in some of the white paint, but not completely covered. And once I was kind of satisfied with the finish that this gave, I just removed the beads and set them aside on an old lid to let them dry. Now it is time to move on to making the bead garland itself. So I added some tape at the one end to hold the beads on so that they would not be falling off my garland as I was making it. Then I also added some tape on at the other end really tightly around this twine I'm using so that I can easily string the beads on. And all I simply did was string the beads on. Now I used two different sizes, a large one and a medium bead. So I alternated a pattern of two large beads, one medium bead, three large beads, one medium bead, until I had the entire chain and all of the beads that I had stained on the piece of twine. Once I got to the end, I wanted to make this a little bit different and make these beads into a circle. So I just made a simple knot here, joining these stained beads together. 
Then using the double pieces of twine, I put more tape on to hold these pieces together. I strung in the beads that I added the paint to, and I just absolutely love the texture that this paint created. It is just so cool. I highly recommend this technique. Once at the end, I took a scrap piece of cardstock and took this gorgeous burnt orange yarn and wrapped it a ton of times around it so that we can make a tassel. So once I was satisfied with the amount of yarn that I had wrapped, I cut off the yarn, I removed it from that piece of cardstock, and then I took the end of the twine on the bead garland and looped it through this loop of yarn that we've created. I tied that off with a knot. Then I brought in one of these Dollar Tree wood leaves and I left this unstained though I'm totally undecided if I want to leave it unfinished or if I want to paint it or stain it the wood color. So please let me know in the comments what you think I should do. Finally, I tied off the center of the tassel with a little bit of yarn so that it would form its tassel shape and cut off the end, gave it a nice little haircut and that completes this really cute fall piece of accent decor. Hopping in right here to tell you thank you for watching this video and if you really want to help out my channel the best way you can do that is by giving this video a like that helps my channel grow and this video spread to other people so we can keep growing this amazing community of crafters that we have here on actually Ali DIY now we're going to make a really cute and trendy fall pillow I picked up this gorgeous orange I guess orange is the theme of this video fabric from Hobby Lobby and I'm just in love with the plaid stripes and just the color. It just looks so good. The pillow form that I am making my pillow for is 26 inches wide by 14 inches tall. So this is a lumbar pillow. Obviously you're going to want to make your measurements to base whatever pillow you're covering. And I actually cut the fabric to exactly the size of my pillow form instead of a little bit bigger because you actually do want the pillow form to be a bit snugger than the pillow itself itself so it looks nice and full and fluffy. I cut out one piece to that measurement and then for the back because I just like making my pillow simple and not wanting to mess around with a zipper I'm doing an envelope style pillow. So what I did was add six inches to that 26 inch measurement so I cut my back piece at 14 by 32 inches. Then to make this an envelope style pillow, you're going to want to cut that piece in half, but not really in half. You're basically gonna wanna make sure that you have enough seam allowance on the one side so that once you fold over the hem, you will have exactly half of the size of the pillow. And then on the other side, you wanna make sure that there's enough so that you have an overlap between the two pieces and also enough room for that hem. Hopefully that makes sense and I can kind of explain it a little bit better here because as you see, I measure my piece to 13 inches, which is half of 26, and then take the fabric and I fold it into a double rolled hem to just get a nice neat looking hem and pinned everything down on this side. Then on the other side, I also did a double rolled hem, not really caring too much about this measurement, but just making sure that there would be enough overlap of the two pieces. And once sewn together would make a 26 inch side for the pillow. I then took those two pieces to my sewing machine and sewed the hem in place. Next, I found this gorgeous tassel trim from Hobby Lobby. I am just in love with it for this pillow and for the fall season. And I cut two pieces, one for each end of this pillow that we're making. And I pinned it down so that the top of the fringe trim was lined up with the outer edge of this pillow so that the fringe was actually on the inside pointing toward the middle of the pillow. And after I had that pinned into place, I just basted it in place with my sewing machine. Finally, it is time to piece the entire pillow together. So I placed down the smaller of the back pieces like so because you're gonna want that piece to be on the outside. And then I placed in the larger of the back pieces and you do wanna make sure you're putting all of the good sides together and then sew up all four sides. 
And as a finishing detail, I decided to use my Cricut to cut out the words Hello Fall in this really cute script font. I'll be sure to link that font in the description box if you want to download it as well. And I'm using some white iron-on transfer vinyl and I just used my Easy Press to press the vinyl in the center of the pillow. And that's what completes this just really gorgeous design. I'm so happy that I added this extra touch. It turned out fantastic. Next up, I want to try something brand new that I haven't done before, and that is paper mache. So I have my little stash of bags within bags that I'm sure everybody on this planet has. And I was going to take them to the recycling bin, but then I thought, why not try some paper mache and make a paper mache pumpkin? So once I was satisfied with the size and shape of the bags all tied up together, I then took some cotton twine from Dollar Tree and pulled it nice and tight to begin creating the grooves of the pumpkin. And I did that all the way around the bag like so. Now I saw a tutorial where they used some masking tape to kind of, I think, hold the string in place and kind of help the bags keep their shape. I'll be sure to link that in the description box. So I did some trial and error until I figured out the best way to hold these pumpkin grooves in place, which basically look like putting two pieces of tape together, lining them up along that center string line, and then just adding some extra tape all the way around the pumpkin to add some reinforcements. I decided I wanted to make my pumpkin out of craft paper. I think this was maybe a little bit more challenging than if I would have just used newspaper, but I really like the color of craft paper. This is just from Dollar Tree. And I took some Mod Podge. This is gloss finish, but I don't really think it matters what the finish is. Dumped it into this container, added some water, and then if you've ever done paper mache before, all you need to do is take the strips of paper, dip them into your glue and water solution, wipe off the excess with your fingers, and then just start sticking the pieces onto the shape. I did find this kind of tricky, and I just think it's because of the thickness of the paper. It was harder to shape it and mold it around this piece that I was creating. It did work, and I did eventually kind of get it down to where I knew what I was doing. But at first, I was like, oh no, is this project going to be a complete fail? And what I found too was helpful after laying down these base strips, I actually set the pumpkin outside so I'd get some of that heat from the sun to dry a little bit quicker. And then I was able to move on to the next step, which was actually going in with tiny little scraps of the craft paper to kind of fill in and make some reinforcements all the way around the pumpkin. And this is really when it began coming together because this, you could just tell that there was actually some structure taking place in this piece. Now I let my little paper mache pumpkin dry for 24 hours before moving on to removing the bag. So I did have to cut back some of the paper at first and then I just cut open the bags and started removing all of the ones from the inside and then I was able to remove the outer liner bags to have my hollow pumpkin shape. Here's a part that I absolutely regret. I kind of wish I would have just left the pumpkin opening exactly where it was, but in my head, I was envisioning this to be a little bit more like a bowl shape. So I cut down the pumpkin a little bit, but I really am not happy that I did that. Next up, I mixed together some paint. I mixed together white, dried clay by Americana, and burnt orange by Top Notch. And all I simply did was paint the entire pumpkin with two coats of this paint. Then once the paint was slightly dry but not completely dry, I took some more white paint and kind of just dry brushed it onto the surface of the pumpkin, working it into that almost dry paint so that it wouldn't be bright white but more turn into a soft kind of orangey tone on the surface of the pumpkin, trying to bring out some of the grooves and shapes that the paper mache created. And I styled it up with some faux florals and here is the finished effect. But 
If you want even more fall inspiration, I'll put those videos on the screen right here. And thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you on my next one. Bye.